What's up guys, Eric here, welcome to Rant and Review. In this video, we're gonna discuss Legends of Tomorrow season three, episode titled Phone Home. So careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with Legends this season, you've been warned, let's get into it. So this episode of Legends takes us all the way back to 1988, which was very nostalgic for me because I grew up pretty much in the 80s. So a lot of these things I remembered from my childhood, uh, like the DeLorean from Back to the Future, all the references to the movies, uh, the whole E.T. stuff, all of that just felt so nostalgic to me so I really enjoyed that aspect of the episode so it may blur my overall opinion of everything that happened so please excuse me if I overindulge in this review because I'm sure that is going to be an issue when I'm talking about some of this stuff one of the things I really enjoyed this week was we spent a lot of time with Zari and Ray and Zari especially coming off of last week's episode she didn't feel like she was shoehorned in she didn't feel like she was just an extra character they put her front and center and man she delivered she had so many great scenes but I'm so glad that they are doing her justice because I was kind of worried coming off of last week were we going to see a lot of her or were they going to do to her what they did to Hawk Girl and Vixen and just not give her a lot of face time at the beginning or right after her introduction basically so I was happy to see this so I'm going to rant for just a second about something that's always bugged me on Legends and that is how undefined their rules of time travel are. It's been like that since the beginning of the series. Some things they say you can't do, they end up doing it. And some of the things they say is impossible, it becomes possible. And in this situation, we have Ray who was killed as a child in 1988. So he disappears on the ship. I don't know how they determine when that actually happens because then they go back to the day before he was killed and magically he reappears. But what made him suddenly disappear on the ship at the age he's at now? Like it just... I know we're watching it, it's linear, it has to make sense to our mind, but to me that just makes it even more confusing. So once back in 1988, we have to find out what happened to young Ray Palmer. So Zari and Ray go out, the rest of the team runs reconnaissance, trying to figure out what is going on, what caused him to be killed in 1988. And they find out that young Ray has stumbled upon a baby dominator, who is the absolutely most adorable thing I've ever seen. I think Ray called him Gumdrop or Gumball. I think it was Gumdrop. I'm gonna go with Gumdrop, but it could be Gumball. I don't know. Either way, it was a cute name. The Baby Dominator was very well done. The special effects were extremely, like in this episode alone, I feel like Legends stepped up the game for their special effects for their CGI because we got a lot of shots of the Baby Dominator and the Mother Dominator. We'll talk about her in a second. Uh, but I think they just did a great job and I love the premise of pulling the Dominators back in again. It's, it's one of those things where they take something they've already used and they use it again, but they do it in a different way. And this was totally unique. And I have to, you know, my hat's off to the team at Legends for doing this because as quirky as the show can be, this was very cool. And also as ridiculous as it was, I love seeing the baby Dominator holding like the Ray Palmer action figure, basically Ray strung down <laughs> and running around with him. And then young Ray did, was like, I don't remember you. I don't recognize this toy. I just thought that was fun. And all that ties up at the end of the episode, which I think is great. So this was, this was a great moment. This episode just had me smiling and in tears throughout the entire episode, which is something legends can do really well when they put their mind to it. And Sarah is the first one to encounter the mother dominator who gives us some iconic scenes from stuff like aliens. And we even have a line later on where Amaya says, get away from her, you bee. That's basically from Aliens as well. So all of those were iconic things. They were totally nostalgic. I loved it. I was I was in pure bliss watching this episode. This was so great for Halloween. It was just so much fun. And the CGI for the uh, Mother Dominator, for the Queen Dominator, was again, well done. I just, I really loved it. And I know it's just special effects, but it was heartbreaking watching this little baby Dominator locked up and being tortured by the government. Now we know what they grow up and what they become. Okay, we know that, I get it. They're like terrible, horrible creatures, but I still felt for this little, this little gumdrop who was locked up and being basically tormented by these government people. And also the singing in the rain part was hilarious. Earlier in the episode when they're watching Singing in the Rain and then later on uh, the baby Dominator makes his the, his captors perform the number from Singing from the Rain, which I thought was just absolutely brilliant. It was cheesy, but it was appropriate cheesy. It worked within the episode. And this is what I'm talking about with the show. Certain things work for me, sometimes they don't. In this week's episode, it worked for me. And at the very end of the episode, after a nice little tribute to E.T. where Zari makes the, the bikes fly through the air by the moon which oh, just so many iconic things i know this is nostalgia goggles i understand that but give me my moment with legends because i loved this episode so much uh, our team saves a day and and sends the baby dominator back to her mother in a very emotional scene where i'm just like why am i tearing up why am i tearing up at the scene 
but I did. It was a big scene for me. Now I want to talk about the stuff I didn't like in this week's episode, because although I loved all the stuff with the baby dominator, there was some stuff that I didn't like, and it deals with the B storyline this week. So Jax and Rory are suspicious of Stein because he's doing stuff on the ship that he probably shouldn't be doing. He's erasing communication logs. It looks like he's leaving the ship and talking to people he shouldn't be talking to. And of course they jump to like the worst case scenario, which is the time bureau, which I this is my thing. Like, why would they jump to that? Why would that be the first thing they would think about? I would think that they would just approach him and, and talk to him and bring it up. But, you know, they had to have some sort of tension in the side story. But anyway, the, the whole point is he was talking to his daughter who is pregnant uh, through this device that he built for him to talk through time, I guess, um, using the ship's communication devices. Uh, but the thing was that he was worried about in this episode getting to his daughter in time before she had her baby. I also want to point out how cool it was that the bullies who were bullying Ray at the beginning of the episode basically got, you know, one-upped because young Ray has the entire legends there in their costumes, uh, trick-or-treating with them, which I thought was excellent. And we saw Zari in a costume, and it, I don't know if that was just for this one scene or if that's actually going to be her costume because it looked kind of, I don't know, I wasn't a fan of it. We didn't get a really good shot of it, so I'm waiting and hoping that we'll see something uh, next week, maybe, with her wearing if she's going to wear it. I didn't really, like I said, I didn't really care for it. Here's a shot of it next to Amaya, and yeah, I don't, I don't like this at all. I mean, it does look, as far as I can tell, like they're going for that comic book look, but from this shot, from the waist up, I don't, I don't know. I don't like it. Let me know in the comments if you guys like this costume or not, because I wasn't a big fan of it. Now, I predicted a couple of weeks ago that they're going to try and break up Firestorm because we know that Victor Garber is leaving the show to go to Broadway and that Jax is staying on the show, as far as we know. So they had to come up with a way to make it so Firestorm doesn't need to merge together, which, by the way, I'm not happy about because that takes away the entire premise of the character of Firestorm being a physical body with someone else's mind in that body, uh, working with the host of the body to use their powers together in a really interesting way. Once you remove that aspect, it just makes it a little weird to me. Uh, but anyway, I thought Stein this week was going to be the one who was going to be working on something to break up Firestorm. But that's not the case. It looks like Jax is going to be the one doing it and that most likely he's going to succeed. Uh, so we will see Jax as a version of Firestorm that's probably not going to be the version that we've been seeing throughout the first couple of seasons. So he will probably have like vastly reduced powers or he may not have powers at all. They may take his powers away completely, or the tech that he uses will have to be present for him to use his powers, meaning that there'll be times where they can take the tech away from him so that he can't just turn into Firestorm because we know that they love to split up these characters so they don't have to use them all the time. So that will probably be the catalyst will be, you know, you've got this tech, he doesn't have it, so he can't be Firestorm. So that was kind of interesting that they did that. So overall, I really enjoyed this week's episode of Legends. It could be nostalgia talking. It could be because I just remember so many of these things from my childhood. Just every couple of minutes, there was something dinging along the way. Uh, and going, but Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. And it was so great. I also want to talk about the fact that Amaya and Nate had some really good scenes this week. I didn't talk about that much earlier. But they had some good scenes. And then the funny stuff with Ray's mother, that was pretty hilarious. Uh, as well. I think they just, they had the perfect blend of like drama, action, comedy, and tension in this week's episode. Um, I did not like the sign stuff with Jax, Rory, and Lily. Um, I just, I, I don't know. It, it didn't make much sense to me. Like he was hiding it from the, from the team. We still don't understand why he was hiding it from the team. Like what was the point? Why would you keep that from the team? Why would that, why would that be like, what reason would he have to not tell the team that he was communicating with his daughter? I I mean, I'm thinking in my head, like, what would be the reason why? There, There is no reason. We also don't know who the father is. Like, she's not married, right? I don't think she's married. There's no boyfriend who would have been, who we didn't see a guy there with her at the hospital. So, is she not married? I'm really confused here because I don't remember that ever happening. Um, and then as far as him being there for the birth of his grandchild, why was that a secret? Why was that a Like, none of that needed to be a secret. And on top of that... Um, the fact that they were rushing to get there in time was hilarious because they're on a time ship. They can time travel. So they're, that whole thing was just really stupid. Uh, so even though I love this episode, I have to take some points off for that. So I'm going to have to give it 
an 8.5 out of 10. I really, really enjoyed this week's episode. Uh, all the little like 80s stuff, like the shot here from ET and everything. It was just so many wonderful things. And I just thank you, uh, Legends of Tomorrow's writers, showrunners, directors, producers for making this episode because it reminds me of the Goldbergs. Like I love the Goldbergs. And I do realize that after a while you run out of gags for stuff like this. But um, I really appreciate that this week. So once again, had a great time with Legends. Uh, but you guys have to let me know what you think up in the corner. Uh, let me know if I was too high, too low, or if you agree with my score. And give me a reason why in the comments below. I know this this episode may divide some people. Some people are going to love it. Some people may nitpick it a bit more because they don't remember any of this stuff. But I do. I grew up during this period. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Anyway, you guys, take care. Have a great day. Have a great week. And I will catch you later. Hey guys, Eric here. Hope you enjoyed my video. If you want to become part of the Ericverse, make sure you subscribe, like, and leave a comment on this video. All of my information is down in the info box, all my social links, my Patreon, all of that good stuff. Join the community, become part of this little world here on YouTube, and go ahead and check out some of my videos over here. I got some great content if you want to keep exploring my channel. Thanks again. Take care.